Now, I know we have a lot of textbooks to read. We have a vast syllabus to cover. And when we go for our exams, the MCQs, the essay questions sometimes span the entire scheme of work. So that leaves us with the question, is there a way to consistently cover everything that one needs to know during the session? And the fact is, the answer is yes. Speed reading, like every other skill, can actually be learned. And I'll be putting you through on the strategies and how to go about mastering speed reading as an art. Hello everyone, it's Gospel here. Welcome to another episode of From Becoming a Doctor. Today I'll be talking to you about something very important that will help you try to stay in medical school. And that's the concept of speed reading. So yes, stick around with me. Thank you for being on the channel so far. And I want to encourage you, if you are new, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, share the link with your friends, and I'll be seeing you on every new episode. So let's get into the business of today. I've already established the reason why speed reading is important for you in medical school. And the good news for you is that you're the pilot. You're actually in control of how your medical school journey turns out. And you have to be intentional throughout your stay in medical school to learn the things that you would require to be a successful medical student and eventually turn out to be a successful medical doctor. Again, remember, you are the pilot and there is nothing that you cannot learn and you are completely in control. Now, speed reading as a concept will revolve around three things I want to establish as our foundation today. The first is kind of the three patterns that people adopt naturally, either as a result of their upbringing or unconsciously. Now we have the sub-vocalizers, we have the auditory readers, and we have the visual readers. The sub-vocalizers, it's actually the slowest among the three categories I've mentioned. Now the person who is a sub-vocalizer has his or her speed while reading reduced by actually about half. This is because as they read, there is an internal monologue happening in their minds that make them repeat what they are actually reading. And this makes them read at about, let's say 250 words per minute. The auditory readers, and this is typically what happens during group studies or during lectures, those persons who rely more on what they hear to learn, they tend to cover about 450 words per minute. And those who are visual readers, who typically just rely on their vision and an understanding of the meaning of the vocabularies, they tend to have the fastest speed when it comes to reading. And they cover about 700 words per minute. So you want to determine which category you actually fall into amongst the three of them. Now, research has shown, this was done somewhere in the United States, that for those who actually do speed reading, they have better comprehension as time goes on and with more practice. Generally, an average person reads about 250 words per minute, but with more practice, you can improve up to the point that your speed is both good and also your comprehension is intact because that's something you do not want to lose while you're engaging in speed reading. It will not be a wise thing to have your speed skyrocketing, but you're losing comprehension. So you want both your speed while you're reading to be up there and also your comprehension of the material you're reading to actually be intact. Now, it's important at this point to talk about the processes involved in speed reading. We have two things essentially in play, and the first is fixation, and the second is circuit. Now, fixation from the word simply means your eyes being fixed on a particular thing. In this case, now, a word in the textbook, the lecture slide, or in the notes that you're reading. Now, this phase lasts about 0.25 seconds for the average person, and the other is circuit. Now, circuit talks about the movement of your eyes, and this is shorter, usually about 0.1 seconds for the average individual. So these are two things that come into play every time you pick a book to read. Now, it's also important to point out that the circuit period cannot be reduced because that's more under the autonomic control. But fixation is where one can work on to actually enhance the speed with which you read. Now, the importance of speed reading, like I said earlier, it really cannot be of overemphasize. It improves your ability to study quickly, it buys you time, it makes sure that you are always on time and on track. For me, when I was in medical school, I can say 98% of the time, whether during my preclinicals, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, basic clinicals, pathology, pharmacology, and even during my clinical years, I always finished the entire scheme. Now, I'm not bluffing, it's not a joke, I always did. And this was because I learned speed reading in my second year in school. I had a mentor, a coach, who kind of taught me and put me through the strategy. So this is something I want to be exposing you to today. And I can assure you, if you give due diligence to actually learn the process, you're going to become very, very good at it. 
Now, what exactly does it take? I talked about the two things involved. So one of the things you would have to work on is the amount of time you spend fixing your eyes on a particular word. So that's the fixation. Again, circuit, you don't have so much control about it, about it, but you have control about over the fixation. And some of the things that would help you would include the understanding of how the eyes work. So one can use peripheral vision, one can use word chunking and a host of other things to actually improve the speed while you're reading. But before we go into all, all that, I want to differentiate speed reading from skimming. Now, skimming talks about reading without really comprehending the material you're reading. It's like you're just glancing through and searching for something. But while you're speed reading, you're actually comprehending the substance of the material that you're looking into. So speed reading is different from skimming. In speed reading, you actually read every word in the page, in the chapter of the text that you're studying. But skimming, it's more like you're looking for some important things and you're ignoring the things you consider not to be important for that particular text before that particular course. Now, as a recap, I've talked about, I've talked to you about the processes involved in speed reading, which includes fixation and the saccadic movement of the eyes. I've talked to you about self-vocalization, the auditory learners, and the visual learners. So these are things that you want to have clear in your mind, so you know the stage where you're in, what you need to work on, and then we go further. Now, for me personally, I have kind of three stages every time I get into a material and I want to study. The first stage is the stage of the super fast reading. The second stage is a stage that is a bit slower. And then the third stage is like the litmus test for my reading speed. So every time I pick a textbook for a course in medical school, I take the textbook and my first reading is always very fast, very fast. I can give, for example, let's say upper and lower limbs in anatomy in a week, I can, and when I talk about in a week, the typical week with lectures and everything you have to do, I can finish the entire coursework in like a week. And, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, how is that possible? Would you remember everything? The goal for me in that first instance is not really to remember everything I'm studying. I want to, yes, have an overview of what that course is about and then pick out the things that tend not to make sense naturally. So I pick out important words, important terminologies, write them down and do a research on them, either with a medical dictionary, hard copy or online, whichever one you have access to. Do a research on them so I can gain insights into a lot of the vocabulary in that particular topic. Now, this will cut across physiology, biochemistry. It's the same principle. That first reading is also super, is always super fast gives you an insight into what the entire course is talking about and then you get the vocabularies that you need to find out their meaning so that when you're doing your second reading you already have an insight into what the vocabularies mean remember i talked about the visual readers they are the fastest readers and this is because they only read with their eyes and they have comprehension about the words in that particular chapter or whatever course that they are studying now, in the second reading, it's slower because now I'll be going, I'll try to do active recall. I have a video on active recall. If you have not watched it, you should try to check it out. You'll see it pop up on the screen right now. So I'll do active recall during my second reading. I'm going to have mnemonics. I'm going to make associations also during this phase. So it's actually the slowest form of reading for me personally. The second time I'm reading a particular course. And now when I'm going the third time, I already have everything sorted out. I understand the vocabularies. I have my mnemonic set, especially for those areas where, you know, there are a list of things that one needs to know or one needs to um, keep in mind. The associations are all there. So I have everything figured out. And this third reading is the stage where I have my litmus test for speed reading. How many words do I cover per minute? How many chapters can I finish? In six hours, how many pages can I cover for that particular textbook, you know, in a couple of hours? So this is like a framework. Your first reading can always be super fast, super fast, but the second reading should tend to be slower. And then the third reading is like, okay, now everything is in place. You decide how to, you know, progress from there. Now, depends on where you're schooling in the world. Sometimes exams come and the entire syllabus has not been covered. And nobody sends, they would still set their questions, especially in the professional exams, cutting across the entire crosswalk. So you have to do the homework to actually delve right into your textbooks. And one of the things you'll be needing again, I'm saying it over and over again, is this skill of speed reading. Now, speed reading comes with practice. 
you have to practice over and over again like every other thing to gain mastery at it yes i'll be giving you about nine to ten strategies that you'll be using that would help you gain mastery in speed reading and then we'll see how we can move on from there some of the barriers to speed reading like i talked about is self-vocalizing so you have to stop self-vocalization i knew in nursery school or kindergarten whatever it's called where you're being trained basically at that um, foundational years of our life while we're in school we are told to say things aloud as we read them we turn to okay a b c the words as you see them you and we tend to grow up with that so what happens is this now you're an adult you're trying to read a book your eyes see it you make a sense of the meaning but then your mind also repeats it so that's like you're doing it twice and it's really not necessary. So it's a habit that we have to unlearn gradually. Because if you do that, if you were to cover, let's say, 900 words in a minute, for example, you will end up covering only 450 words in one minute. So sub-vocalization is something we have to intentionally let go of. Some persons, some school of thoughts recommend distracting yourself from doing that either by chewing a gum or just keeping yourself a bit busy, you know, while you're reading. Some say play classical music, so whatever the case is, whatever would work for you. But the basic thing is you have to unlearn that. Stop the art of sub-vocalization -vocaliz and your speed would actually improve, let's say, by two. So that's the first. The second is visual regression. Now you notice that sometimes you're reading and it feels like your eyes are just going all over the page. Meanwhile, you're supposed to be focusing on one particular line. So what you can do to help you and cure visual regression you can do two things either you pick up a pen and use it as a guide for your eyes while you study or you can take um, these are little stick sticker papers the ones that we sometimes use for um, flashcards and you just use it to guide your eyes while you actually study to make sure that your gaze maintains its alignment on that particular line and your eyes are not going all over the page where you do not want it to go. So visual regression is something that also reduces your speed while you study and you want to take care of it. Now, also the mentality. I've heard a lot of persons tell me when I talk to them about speed reading, they're like, I'm not a fast reader. And I tend to tell them that, okay, no one was essentially born a fast reader. It's just a habit that one picks up along the way. And like every habit, you can learn it, you can master it. So take away the thought from your mind that you are not a fast reader. That's going to be a limiting factor. In medical school, you must be flexible. For the person who will survive medical school, one of the characteristic traits that you must have is flexibility. Don't keep yourself in that box by saying, I'm not a fast reader. You can learn it. It's going to take time. It took me, let's say, roughly about six months to eight months to eventually gain a foothold on speed reading. But for the past seven to eight years, it's something that has helped me in anything I'm doing that has to do with academics. So yes, giving your best shots towards learning it. Now we've identified three things that would affect your speed while you study and then the solutions to the solutions to slow reading. Now the first solution is word chunking. So word chunking simply talks about reading words in group as against looking at them singly. So it's a kind of system where your gaze is on two or three words at a time and you're taking them like that it improves and gets better the more you practice it because you have that peripheral vision that helps you not just focus on one particular word at a time you can actually be looking at something and you're seeing two or three words so if there are 10 words in a line you might look, only actually have to have three circuit, circadic movements and then you've covered that line as against trying to look at each word individually and then you need to have let's say about 10 or 9 circadic movements to cover the entire line so you need to learn how to look at words together in their groups what chunking would help you if you want to improve your speed in reading now peripheral vision now this is a bit more difficult because i i kind of started using this towards my fifth year in medical school it's a practice whereby your eye kind of stays at the central part of the page and you allow the your visual feeds cover the remaining parts of the page like i said it's a bit more difficult and you want to start from word chunking before you move to this final level and i tend to do peripheral vision especially when it's very close to exams and i've mastered the course material already and all i need to do is just like a swift revision so you fix your eyes on the center of the page and you allow your eyes just move but your head is not moving your eyes is on the center of the page and you allow 
your eyes move to and fro and that's it your speed is going to significantly improve if your peripheral vision game can go up sometimes your eyes may not even actually have to move if the wordings on that particular section of the book aren't so much your eyes may just be at that central point and with your peripheral vision you can actually see all the words you know that are laid before you in that particular page so improving your peripheral vision is something you want to do making use of a timer so this was like in my third year i'm usually going to set like a stopwatch open a chapter of the book i'm supposed to read that particular evening based on my plan and it goes like in the next 30 minutes i want to be done with this chapter that does some things for me it keeps me focused keeps my attention in check and then i do what i need to do and looking at the time i'm able to ascertain what my speed is going to look like in a sense so you want to use a timer to help you to help you keep keep focus help you assess your current level of speed when it comes to reading so keep a timer by your side every time you read and monitor the progress you're making if for a particular textbook you could finish 20 pages in an hour and in a month's time for that same textbook you're finishing let's say 40 pages in an hour that's going to be an indication for you that your speed has significantly improved so yes using a timer is going to be of help to you now set a goal again this goes in tandem with the principle of using a timer. So setting a goal means I'm coming to the library where I study or let's say in class for those of us that do nine class, depending on where you're getting your medical training. So nine class typically just means going to school, using a classroom or the library to study at night. So um, I'll set a goal and say in the next four hours, I want to have covered about three chapters depending on what I estimate the workload of the chapters to be. Or in the next four hours, I want to cover up to six chapters. And that's a goal I'm chasing. Yes, at the beginning, I may not attain that goal, but it's possible at some point that I will consistently meet the goal that I've set. So if you want to improve your speed when you're reading, set goals for yourself. Set goals that seem crazy, stretchy, and see how far you can push yourself, see how much you can go. Yes, read more. Like every act, every skill you learn, you only get better by doing it more. So the more you read, the better you become at the art of speed reading. The more you expose yourself to textbooks, the more number of textbooks you read for the different courses, your speed is going to improve. Now, I, I know at some point for some courses, I was reading up to like three textbooks or some even four, at some point even five. Now, when I put all of this in my plan, it pushes me to the wall. I know that I'm going the extra mile and I have the same time that everybody has so the only way out of this for me is for my speed to be significantly improved and significantly up there so yes read more your reading speed is going to significantly improve if you can read more utilize a marker this will help you with the issue of visual regression and it also because now I have to demonstrate so imagine your hands moving like this you see how slow it is at the time when you're going like this like this like this like this so especially when it comes to revisions in medical school there are times when the speed of the pen i'm using is you know moving so fast so it's going to keep your eyes focused on the particular line you're studying as well and it can help improve your speed if you use a marker because remember visual regression is one of the things responsible for slow reading so if you actually use the marker like we talked about then the marker is not to highlight the book sorry anything you find that you can actually use to just keep your eyes focused on the line you're reading would qualify for the marker i'm talking about now so it will help you take care of visual regression thereby helping you improve your reading speed Improving your vocabulary. Now, this is super important. Remember that the visual readers are the fastest in all the categories of reading. Now, imagine you don't understand some of the words you're reading. You're either going to do one of these three things. You will either stop and go and search for the meaning of the word online. You probably pause and wonder what it means. Where have you heard it? Where have you seen it? Or you pause to ask someone who is by your side or maybe check the hard copy of your medical dictionary. And maybe some other options are available to you but 
a situation whereby you actually understand every word you're not meeting the word for the first time you're not going to have to do all of that so all of those distractions are kind of out of the way so you want to make sure you improve your vocabulary every time we hear a new word in any course put it down go for the meaning try to recite it make sure you understand it and have that box checked improving your vocabulary will significantly help you improve your reading speed in any of the courses in medical school now read with objectives in mind. Every time you pick a textbook to study, always have an objective, always have a goal. It's going to keep you more focused and help you stay directed with the amount of attention you're putting in to that particular work. So read with objectives in mind. Don't just pick a book and you're going aimlessly. Have a goal for the ninth, have a goal that you've set. How many pages do you want to cover? What understanding do you want to come out with? from reading that particular material, from reading that particular chapter. All this will help improve your attention, improve your focus, and which will also help you improve your speed when it comes to reading. And then finally, go faster than you think you can. There were crazy times in school, especially when I had to prepare for professional exams where I set super crazy goals. Now, largely at this point, I understand most of what the textbook is talking about. And I set some very crazy goals like, okay, Physiology, blood physiology, for instance, in six hours, I'm going to be done with about 25 chapters. And sometimes, surprisingly, I actually hit the goal. And that was it. All through, you know, year four, year five, pediatrics, ONG, pathology, pharmacology, even final year, community medicine or public health, internal medicine, surgery. I always finish the textbooks of choice and the multiple materials we were given to study. Um, but sometimes I had to just set very crazy goals and see how far I could push myself and how far I could go. Practice these steps, stay committed in your journey, stay consistent, and before you know, you're going to be a super, super, super fast reader. Thank you for watching today's episode. I'll be seeing you on the next episode of On Becoming a Doctor. You want to check out our other videos on the channel. I've done videos on planning, time management in medical school, goal setting in medical school, active recall, and a host of the other videos. So thank you once again for joining. I'll be seeing you on a new episode of On Becoming a Doctor on Sunday by 12 p.m. next week. Thank you.